Okay, we're gonna see how this goes. Um, we're doing something different today because I got very inspired. One of my best friends is building a Game Boy, and there's a milling machine at his college where he gets to mill circuit boards. And I thought it would be fun to copy Moritz Klein's uh, voltage controlled oscillator series and try to get this into KiCad. Now, and then maybe, you know, do the routing and trace it out and maybe even cut it tonight or, you know, in the next couple of days. The other thing that I'm, ooh, I'm a little loud. The other thing that I might want to do is uh, I saw PCB way or something like this. Um, but let's actually just ask ChatGPT. Um, I am building the I, I get, how do I get it made by someone? Generate them Gerbers. But it's cold as fuck out here, so I don't know how long I'm going to spend out here because I'm out here at Kendall Square again. And, you know, it's windy out here. And it's sunny, but, like, not where I'm at. Uh, nah, but, like, who will, like, who will, okay, here we go. JLC PCB. See, this is the other one. But we're jumping the gun by looking at this thing. Oh, I've seen this. Why are they all in China? We should build one in America, man. Because the thing is, it's just going to take a long time to get to me. That's, that's, I guess, what I'm worried about. Wow, 64 layers? That's absurd. Um... These PCBs are really nice, too. Alright, so anyways, uh... Oh, look, uh... Hi. Okay, so... Let's just get started with... And I've done this before, but let's just get started with... I just want to get down... This... And then the buffer... Okay, so and then down here he has all the components, so he might as well just. Uh, I, this is the cool thing about a uh, KiCad. Here's the op amp, I guess, for the buffer. Here's the diode. I love that, man. They just have every part imaginable. Uh, okay, I think I can just do C, right? No? C. Unpolarized capacitor. So that's good stuff. Uh, and then we just set the value to it. This is one thing that I remember was really janky. And also, I don't know, can am I allowed to do that or do I have to pick a, a specific model of something? Like, what if I put in 0 0.1 and F? Dude, I swear they play the exact same playlist here every single day. It's kind of annoying, actually. I need gloves, guys. My hands are getting cold. Someone send me gloves. Okay, fine. Well, let's just... All right, so we have one microfarad, one nanofarads, and then a bunch of resistors. So I think we can just do R. We can just go boop, boop. Oh, wait. One. Boop. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Okay, so we have our four resistors. We have our, oh wait, we need one more capacitor. Oh, but we need to change the value of it. Okay, we'll change the value of it. 3.5 millimeter or 6 point. I forget which one of these is, uh, Um, which one of these is a normal box cable? I'm pretty sure it's the 3.5. Yeah. Oh, this is a quarter inch? I mean, I don't even know. Okay, so I'm building a VCO voltage-controlled 
boss in KaiCad and following the guide that has this as a component. Is this something I can put into KaiCad? Or should? I, I feel like I should, right? Like, you can and should include the jack socket in your KaiCad design if it's part of your VCO. Okay, so let's try to look up Jack. Connector. Hmm. Oh, audio. Is that what I want? Let's look up, let's just look up 3.5 millimeters. Wow, the search on this was kind of slow. Audio. Wait, why is it? That's an audio processing. That's not what I want. Audio jack. Oh, connector audio. Two pools, three pools. Oh, cool. It actually looks like the thing. Guys, check that out. Oh, shit. This thing's kind of sucky. That's sick. Dude, I love this digital fabricate. This fabrication stuff is sweet. I want to branch out, man. I want to do all this shit. Yo, drop a, drop a comment if you want to see more Kaikad shit. Um, so what are we up to here? What do I need? I think I, I think I need mono. Let's just do mono for now. All right, cool. So we got our jack. And I think that's all our components. So now we can start wiring shit together. Um, so let's go here. I actually know this circuit by heart because I've done this so many times. But last time I tried this, I fell into the trap of thinking that I needed my, uh, what is it, ERC or DRC to be like, to be able to simulate the circuit because I wanted to verify that all these parts would work together and then it wouldn't like, I don't know, not work. But for right now, since I'm going to be able to just buy these parts and, like, um, uh, hold on. I want to actually, he has kits, though. Why don't I just buy the kit? I feel like that's lame, but I don't know why that's lame. I feel like it's actually not lame. Sixty euros is like pretty good. What's the how long does it take to get to me? I mean, this is pretty cool, but all right, I don't want to get distracted by this because I don't know how long it's gonna take, and I feel like it's cooler to not do a uh, kit. I mean, kits are sweet, but. We already have all this set up, so might as well. Um, this is this is the parts list. Where should I buy this stuff? Amazon. Okay, what if I just look up like one of these, like the op amp? Is this the op amp? No, that's the Schmidt trigger. What if I just look that up on Amazon? Oh wait. Uh, am I allowed to go on Amazon? Probably not. I don't like that. All right, I'm not going to go on Amazon. Uh, I'm just going to look up this. All right, so you can just buy this. It's Yeah, and I understand how this circuit kind of works. This is probably... Oh, I don't have to think about how this is working. All right, but we're following not that. I can get lost in all sorts of shit, but for right now, let's just get wiring. I'm so bad at this wiring thing. I forget how to do it. Is this the wiring one? Highlight wires, add components, 
Add a wire. Okay, we slick wire mode. Oop. Okay, so we do this. We go there. How do I move? Oh, there we go. Wait, but that doesn't let me move horizontally. Uh, this is kind of annoying. Okay, also, wait, hold on. If I tip M, nice. All right, so we get this out of here. Let's just get our minimal. We want R1 here. We want this here. Then we want this big point. And then we want to add a jund. Okay, cool. So that's the core. Um, On this oh, and then point. we need the buffer. Buffer, 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 buffer. So I forget how to do this part. Where's our button? Here's our op amp. And we need to figure out where do we connect it into the circuit. Does he have a diagram of that? Oh, and then we need a voltage divider. Okay, so that's what the two resistors are for. So this is only one of them, right? Ooh. This is a quad op amp, but we only get one of the things, right? I see. U2A. That's what I'm guessing, is it? Right, because it's it says it's part of a quad op amp. Um, which I love that they have keywords here. That's so cool. Um, okay, I need to figure out where to put the buffer. I think the buffer should be the... Is it this or is it the output of the Schmidt trigger? Let's uh, let's figure it out. I mean, I feel like I should reason about it, but you know what? Sometimes I don't want to. Also, guys, is anyone else experiencing this? When I press space on YouTube now, it doesn't actually play my video sometimes. You might be tempted to just this attach an it. audio jack socket right where we plugged our oscilloscope in. See, how's my volume on that? Generally, that's going in the right direction, but right, sadly, it won't work at all. Appears. This provide our capacitor is never being charged because all of the current is leaving through our audio jack. So by trying to listen to the oscillation, we're actively stopping it because we are tampering with the construction of the whole thing. To avoid doing that, we will need to use a buffer. Buffers also work with pressure sensors, but they use them to simply mirror or copy the voltage levels that they detect. And since no current is flowing into the sensors, they are not interfering with what they're attached to. That's why they are a perfect fit for our problem here. With a buffer, we can leave our oscillator structurally intact and working, while still being able to listen in with our sound system. To build a buffer, I'm going to use an op amp, set up like this. This way, we'll have our sensor on this side, while over here, we'll get our copy of the sensed voltage levels. Sounds simple enough, but there is a catch. This is the pinout diagram for a TL074, which is four op amps in one chip. Now, with our 4106, we had a power and a ground connector, but with this chip, there's power and negative power. What's up with that? Well, the thing about voltages is that they're always just relative. If we talk about a 9-volt battery, for example, all we really know is that the voltage difference between the two terminals is going to be 9 volts, if your battery is fresh. So what we're basically doing there is that we're picking a pressure level to call 0 volts, and then the volts don't come into play. We pick Where does so it connect? Is really just necessary for our buffer, when they have to copy rails. But if those voltage levels get close to those rails, the buffer can't accurately reproduce them anymore. So while we could just hook it up to our positive and ground rails, we should instead use positive and negative rails, just to provide it with enough headroom and prevent distortion outright. If you have a dual power supply like this one, that's not a problem. But what if you want to use batteries instead? Thankfully, that's totally doable. You just need to connect two 9-volt batteries like this. Oh, actually, you, do that, you know what? I want to... I feel like it probably does. I want to see if there's 9-volt batteries in this thing. Dude, this... Making chips is fucking rad. Nine volt. Uh, what if I look up nine volt battery? Uh, 
That's kind of cool. Okay, well, whatever. Look, it's cold, guys. It's winter. The negative terminal of this one becomes your minus 9 volts. While the positive terminal of this one is now your plus 9 volts. And the other two combine to become your new ground. Easy. So let's add our negative power rail to the breadboard and set up the op-amp buffer. Okay, so now that our buffer is done, we need to connect it to our oscillator core. Wait, hold on. Which one is the op amp? This is the diode. What is that? That's the capacitor? So this is the op amp? Right where we plugged in our oscilloscope. So can we listen to it finally? We could. Okay, so that's connected to the capacitor. Let's go back to uh, initial build. I see. Which is six of those in one single chip. This guy's and videos so, are so good, it's Here's crazy. A panel to get it to working at all, we need to connect this pin to the power rail, while this pin needs to be tied to ground. Then we can basically choose any of these inverters to be the one we'll be working with. I'm picking the one down here. There's one catch to using this chip though. We need to connect all the unused inputs to ground, because otherwise they might pick up static noise and make the inverter we do use act irrationally. So first, let's set up that chip. Next, I'll put in the diode. Orientation is important here. If you look at it closely, you'll notice this thick black stripe on one side of it. This represents the line of the diode symbol, meaning the current can only flow from here to here. For the capacitor, the orientation doesn't matter, but beware that's not true for every type. I'm using a foil capacitor. So wait, so which one was the input? Okay. So the thing that's next to ground... Wait, did he orient it backwards? I can't tell. Because... what? No, no, that's fine. Okay, so output is... Okay, so let's see. You'll notice this thick black stripe on one side of it. This represents the line of the diode symbol, meaning the current can only flow from here to here. For the oh, yeah, okay, so that's right. The capacitor, the orientation doesn't matter. But beware, that's not true for every type. I'm using... So wait, so where should the capacitor go? The capacitor should be connected to the third one from the A bottom. foil capacitor here, which is non-polarized. And Electrolytic ones, on the other hand, are polarized. Make sure to keep this in mind. I'm confused, to be honest. Then I'll add in the resistor. Here, the orientation also does not matter. Finally, I'll connect my power supply to the breadboards. Right, okay, okay. And now this should already be oscillating. To check on that, I'll use an oscilloscope. An oscilloscope works pretty much like the sensor on our Schmidt trigger. It's detecting pressure levels and then drawing them onto a screen. This makes it a very useful tool for monitoring and troubleshooting. To use it, I'll first have to connect this wire to our circuit's ground. And then connect this wire to wherever we want to monitor the voltage levels. In our case, that would be right here, at the intersection of Schmidt trigger input, capacitor, and drain resistor. I wish I could zoom in more. Come on. Okay, yeah. And yes, we're actually seeing what we expected to see. Why is it going so First, slow? a near instant rise in pressure, followed by a slow decline. And this waveform just repeats indefinitely. It's so cold out here. So our basic oscillator seems to be working. But what good is an oscillator that you can't hear? Right, so let's figure out how to connect this to a sound system. Or headphones, whatever you prefer. You might be tempted to just attach an audio jack socket right where we plugged our oscilloscope in. Generally, that's going in the right direction, but sadly, it won't work at all. Uh, let me demonstrate. The wave just disappears. And that actually makes a lot of sense. Because what we're effectively doing is providing an additional path for our proverbial water to flow into. That way, our capacitor is never being charged because all of the current is leaving through our audio jack. 
So by trying to listen to the oscillation, we're actively stopping it because we are tampering with the construction of the whole thing. To avoid doing that, we will need to use a buffer. Buffers also work with pressure sensors, but they use them to simply mirror or copy the voltage levels that they detect. And since no current is flowing into the sensors, they have a problem. It's in one shape ground connector. But with this chip, there's power and then measure everything relatively. But if those are more divided with it, that's not a problem. But what if you want very distorted. To understand why that's necessary, so we'll move that. to our, our negative power rail to the breadboard and set up the op and buffer. Okay. Okay, yeah, so you connect those two together. That makes sense. This is the pinout diagram for a TL074. Let's go back. Then he connects the positive to... Which is... I'm so bad at this. Yeah, no, 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 that's clear. That's like where the resistor's at. All right, so let's try that. Ay, ay, ay. Um, let me put this down here. Okay, so then the first thing to do. Wait, do we need to flip it? I feel like we need to flip it. Can I flip it? And you know what? Who cares? Do, do, do. And the positive connects to this. Oh, guys, guys, are we crazy or what? Okay, so now here's, this goes to the audio jack. So how does the audio jack work? Does one side go to ground? Ooh, I'm blinded by the line. Oh, but we need the voltage divider. A few more precautions to take. The first one of which being to install a coupling capacitor. To understand what is necessary, we'll have to talk a bit about offset. So wait, I want to check the micro center. There's no way they have this part. That would be insane. What is it called again? This is the Schmidt trigger? Yeah. There's just no way. Okay. He doesn't actually say how to hook up the jack, I feel like. Said voltages. Remember how we said that electrical oscillations are just swings between two voltage levels? The thing about that is that those voltage levels could be up here or even down here in the negatives. It doesn't matter. You'd still have the same oscillation and waveform, but its center is shifted either upwards or downwards. Normally, oh yeah, with I forgot. Signals, the that center would be around zero volts, so right here in the middle. But these the two DC oscillations... The offset, I think, is just... An RC. have what we call an offset voltage. Plus 5 for this one, minus 5 for this one. And if we look at the graph for our oscillator again, this is also off-center. That is not ideal for audio signals because it might cause an amplifier to distort the sound. So what we need to do is remove any offset voltage from our oscillation. Thankfully, doing that is really easy. Um, we just need two components. All right, so I think that that's just all we need is in between here. So I think we just need to do this. Uh, yeah, it's cap. So let's rotate this thing. Did I get it? Ugh. Unacceptable. Well, why isn't control Z? There we go. Dude, KiCat is so fun.
Oh, thanks, guys. A capacitor and a resistor set up like this. Here's how it works. First, imagine two pipes being connected with a balloon kind of between them like this. Now no water can get from one pipe into the other since it's blocked by the balloon. But, and that's the kicker, water from here can still push in this direction by bending and stretching the balloon, causing a flow in the other pipe by displacement and vice versa. Next, we'll have to bring in our resistor after the coupling point going straight to ground. This acts like a kind of equalizing valve, and that's how we equalizing knock out the voltage. Valve. Yeah, because yeah, now yeah, imagine sure. we apply a steady 5 volts from this side. Then on this side, we'll read 0 volts after a short amount of time. Why? Well, we're pushing water into the balloon with a constant force from here. The balloon is stretching into this pipe, yeah. pushing water in this direction. If we didn't have the equalizing valve here, there'd be nowhere to go for that water. But since we do have it, the excess water can drain out through this narrow pipe, out of the system until the pressure is neutralized and no water is actively flowing anymore. Okay, so now imagine that the pressure on this side starts oscillating, let's say between 4 and 6 volts. When we start to go below 5 volts on this side, the balloon will begin contracting, basically sucking the water in this pipe to the left. This will create a negative pressure level here, like as if you're sucking on a straw, making the voltage drop below 0 volts. Then, once we've completed the bottom half of our waveform, we go above 5 volts on this side, and our balloon will inflate and stretch out again, pushing the water here to the right and the pressure will go positive, making the voltage rise above zero volts. So we've recentered our oscillation around the zero volts line. That's but so beautiful, I love that. If water can escape through here, doesn't that mess with our oscillation? Well, technically, yes, but practically, we're choosing a narrow enough pipe here to make the effect on quick pressure changes negligible. Don't take my word for it, though. Let's try it out. I'll add in a one microfarad capacitor and a 100k ohm resistor after our buffer. And now let's hook our oscilloscope up to this point. Where are we putting the oscilloscope? We're putting it right here, right? Ideally, our sawtooth will look as pointy and sharp as ever. Looks good enough for me. So, can we listen in now? Well, we're almost there. But as a final touch, we should decrease the volume of our oscillation. Because a very loud signal like this can, again, damage your... I want to also... Uh... For my readme. We have Git, right? Uh, VCO, uh, following Moritz Klein's, uh, uh, B VCO series in KiCad with the hope of eventually milling or ordering it, creating or ordering it. Cool. Let's, uh, that's it. That's cool. I don't know. What is all this shit? Post name Jane, bro. That's right. I don't think that that's that problematic. Um, we should we should call it. Or I don't know how this should be filed for, but I feel like this is fine. Okay. Yeah, my hands are so cold. To do that, we will use a voltage divider, which is just two resistors set up like this. Here's the input, and over here is the output. If R1 and R2 are the same size... Okay, let's just do that. Uh... Oop. I was telling my friend, it'd be so nice if they, if the CAD community had the same kind of like formatting tools that code does. I know it's not as easy to do, but it's so nice that like all this stuff is messy. If I could just press sh like shift alt F and it, it just like cleans up the diagram so the logic is as pretty as possible. That'd be pretty nice.
size, the output voltage will be half of what the input voltage is. How does it work? Let's use our analogy again. So we have a pipe on this side, where water is being pushed in this direction with a specific amount of force. Attached here is a narrow pipe, which represents R1, followed by another white pipe. Then down here, there's this other narrow pipe, representing R2, where water can exit the pipe system. Finally, imagine we have a pressure sensor attached right here. Okay, so first, think about what would happen if R2 was completely closed off. Our sensor here would tell us that the pressure in this pipe is exactly the same as the pressure in this pipe over here, because the pushing force from here has nowhere else to go. It has to accumulate over here. On the other hand, imagine R2 would just be a wide opening. Then the pressure here would be zero, because it would all escape through here. But what happens if R2 is neither completely closed off nor wide open? Well, then the pressure here would accumulate to varying degrees, depending on the narrowness of the two resistor paths. So if pipe R1 Dude, is wide and pipe sick. R2 is narrow, most of the pressure will be retained here. But if it's the reverse, the pressure level will be only a tiny fraction. And if R1 and R2 are identical, the pressure here will be exactly half of what we send in here. So since an oscillation is really just a swing between voltage levels, we should be able to scale or divide it down by using this method. To see if that works, let's first check the size of our original oscillation on the oscilloscope. So you can see that the oscillation is between the bottom of this square in. and the top of this square. All right, we'll try so to make we it could to say hour that it has a height of three squares. And now I'll set up our voltage divider with two 100k ohm resistors. And I'm expecting to see the size of that oscillation to be cut down by half. Yeah, that looks about right. Now the oscillation is about one and a half squares high. So now we're finally good to connect this to mm. an amp. I'm curious, do I have GH on here? Let's see. Let's see if this works. I mean, PowerShell is not the worst thing ever. Like, people love to hate because of the impurity, but like, big fucking deal. All right, let's see if this thing works. I mean, that just worked really well. Windows haters be like, but, 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 but. Okay, so what we out, what we up to, bruh? Oh, but do I have my... Yeah, but I actually do want the uh, command that I like. Hold on. This one. I'm going to do this, but then I want to change it to... Oh, yeah. Oh, this this might be... All right, let's see how this works, because this was a nightmare to get working in WSL. I got to... Oh, that just worked so well. Ew. What the fuck? Ew. Why is that sticky? Ew. I don't like that at all. Ew. What is that? This couch I'm on is sticky. 
Dude, I don't know why it's sticky. There's some shit on this couch. Nasty ass couch. Alright, let's figure this out. So now I should be able to push my repo. No commits. Yeah, let's, uh, okay. Init. Oh, wait, I'm gonna add a link to Moritz's thing. All right, that's good stuff. Now let's do it again. Now, let's see, can I open that up? Nice. All right, that's good stuff. What's up, bro? No harm pun. All right, so. I don't know what he's doing with the audio jack. My guess is that he just puts one to the... And there you have it. You one to the ground, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're just going to make another ground here. Um, I don't know. Is uh, let's, let's ask. Is a two-pole audio jack symmetric, or can either side go to ground? Typically not. Okay, the sleeve goes to ground. All right, cool. Okay, so I'm gonna say episode one. Uh, episode one schematic is done. Oh, does this just keep regenerating an entire zip? Okay. So we need to fix that. Alright, so we finish the schematic. Also, get a. Okay. Cool. Good stuff. What else do we need? Let's just look at episode two. What else did we need? Because it's too high pitch right now. Well, the frequency is really a bit too high. Uh, but Look at the waveform I picked up from after that voltage divider. The top part is weirdly rounded. This is not ideal because we don't want to put out a misshapen wave. To fix it, we'll just use two 10k resistors instead of 100k's for our divider. I'm not going to go into detail on why that works because that's a topic for another video. Small hint though, we accidentally created a weird bandpass filter. Oh wait, here, here was the audio jack. That's perfect. Alright, it's not in frame though, I can't tell which is which, but presumably I did it. With bandpass filter. I don't okay, understand why it's not symmetrical. Now. Great, it's looking pointy and sharp again. Okay, so now let's talk about oscillation frequency. Remember when I said that a sawtooth wave's pitch is easy to manipulate? Because it's all dependent on the wave's second phase? That's going to come in handy now, since that second phase is really just this capacitor discharging through this resistor. If it's discharging fast, the pitch is high. If it's discharging slow, the pitch is low. The speed of that discharging process is determined by exactly two factors. The capacitor's size and the resistor's resistance value. The bigger the balloon, the more water it can store, and the, the longer it takes to release the water. The tighter this pipe, the more it restricts the water flow. 
Let's try this out by first swapping the 2.2 nanofarad capacitor for a 1 microfarad one. That's about 450 times bigger. Yeah, that's pretty big. And as you can hear, the frequency is also a lot lower, almost in the LFO range. Next, I'll swap the old capacitor back in, and then switch our 100k ohm drain resistor for a 1 mega ohm one. That's 10 times bigger. Ooh. And so the pitch isn't lowered as much as before. So which route do we take? Changing the capacitance or changing the resistance? To be honest, that's pretty much a non-choice for two reasons. Reason one is that increasing the capacitance not only changes the second phase, but also the first phase of a wave along with it. Yeah. If the capacitor is big enough, charging it will take more and more time, until our wave morphs into a weird triangular shape. Uh, let's check it out by installing a really big capacitor. A weird triangular shape. And as you can see, the charging process now takes so long that the first phase gets seriously bent this way. This not only changes the sound, but also messes with the pitch. But apart from that, and more importantly, changing the capacitor can only be done manually by taking the old one out and installing a new one. And that's probably not the most fun way to make music, which leaves us with only one true option, changing the resistance value. Here, we thankfully have way more options than just changing it by hand. We could use a light-dependent resistor, where the resistance value depends on the amount of light that shines onto it. We could also use a thermistor, that would be cool. which is the same idea, but reacting to temperature instead. But the classic idea would be to use a transistor, which in this scenario works like a voltage-controlled resistor. Did Before we get into that, let's take a look at what a transistor is that. exactly. There's a lot of different types of transistors, but the one we're looking at here is called the NPN bipolar okay, junction cool. transistor. So we need to add a potentiometer. We have the audio jack, so we're good there. We need a bunch of resistors. We need five resistors and this. Oh no. Oh, that's cool. This site looks sussy. Who owns this? Snap EDA? Because they look sus. Maybe they're not. My name's Natasha. I'm the founder of Snap EDA. Snap EDA is a platform for electronics design, and we provide millions of blueprints that engineers can build on top of to design better electronic products faster. So as an electrical engineer, I worked at a... All right, should I just lo lo sign up? I'm good with that. Wait, hold on. Oh, bro, I decided to switch up for today. Because my friend, he has access to this fab lab, so I want to make some circuits. But hold on, I gotta... I gotta uh... Fuck, I hate capture. Okay, nice. All right, we should be able to. All right. So, yeah, so check it out. Check it out. Uh, all this is our schematic. We're following, um, we're following this series where he builds a synth. So we're building a synth. 
Um, slowly, we're going to get everything on his channel into KiCad, exactly how he did it. I wonder if I have to... I wonder what happens if I... Oh, hold on. Uh, Gmail. But actually, I'm outside right now, and it's starting to get real cold. I'm sure it's not as cold as, cold as Poland, but it's starting to get real cold out here. Did I, um... Sorry, hold on guys. This is, getting, this is real boring, I know. But it's not letting me download what I want. What? Resend the validation email. Wow, it sent me something, but it didn't send me the... Oh, here. I see it. All right, I got the verification email, guys. Nice. All right, cool. So now I just close all this. All right, now we should be able to download this thing. These six and later. Okay, so now I want to go to source, KiCad, libraries, this thing. Then I want to... I feel like it's not going to be hard to figure out how to import this thing. I hopefully they don't do any bullshit to me. Well, let's see. Go to preference manager symbol library. Right, I did this before. I go here, I go to preferences, I go to manage symbol library, then I go to add. Then I go to libs, this one, and then I just click that, and then we have it, and then I say okay. What the hell is going on here? Okay. Then we go to manage footprint libraries, and I think we got the footprints too, right? So then we go to this thing. Okay, maybe we didn't. Oh, that's kind of fucked up though, right? I thought we were supposed to get the footprints. What does this even mean? We found an alternate part. Oh, wait, here we go. Wait, downloads. Ooh, what is this? Oh, wow, they, they have a package. That's kind of cool. Dude, these things are so stupid. I don't want any of this. Don't do that. Downloaded two times. But where is the... Is the mod the... What is a footprint file? Okay, well, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, all right, so let's try it. Do I have my part now? Nice. Bipolar NPN transistor, baby. Transistor, which is quite a mouthful, which in turn is why most people just call them NPN transistors. Compared to all the components we discussed last time, these are definitely... 
more complex. Fuck and our water so analogy cool might here. get pushed a bit beyond its limits here. But let's try to apply it nonetheless. So imagine we have a uh, T-shaped joint minutes, where two pens meet, looking home. like this. There's yeah, three openings. This, this one we call the collector, this one is the base, and this one down here is called the emitter. Right in the middle, we have this seal blocking any water flow from here to here. Oh yeah, wait, I want to add all the parts before down. I... Okay, so let's... Uh, R... Are we needed five? All right, we're getting fast at this. And then now I need a pot. I wish I was high on pot news. I'm so funny. Um, and we already have the jack, so we're good. But it can move horizontally, though there is a spring mechanism holding it in place. So pushing it in this direction requires some amount of force. With that in mind, let's check out two possible scenarios. First, imagine that there's a pump pushing water downwards from up here while we are keeping the pressure levels neutral here and here. Since our seal is blocking any water from flowing in this direction, we will only be raising the pressure at this point. Not very exciting. But once we add in a second water pump pushing from this side, things get a lot more interesting. Because if that pump is strong enough, I wonder if anyone we will has be able CI to overpower the spring and push the seal. That would be pretty cool. ICAD CI. No, 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 no. Like, like that would be so cool. Like it, like you get, like it gets a binary of KiCat, then it runs the uh, design checker. Yeah, it runs the rule checker. That's sick, man. Oh, because then you have a team working on this schematic, and as you make changes to it, that's fucking cool. Uh, okay, let's go back to work to the right, opening this junction and allowing water to pass through. So in effect, this downward flow is controlled by this kind of angular flow. As long as there's a right, closing the transistor. On, the because of that, transistors like these are often used as electrical switches. Imagine a simple switch like this one, but instead of operating it by hand, we can operate it with a current. Whenever the voltage increases by one, our oscillator's pitch should go up one octave. To achieve this, the relationship between voltage input and frequency output also needs to be exponential, because we are basically mapping voltages to nodes. And because our oscillator's pitch is determined by how open our transistor is, we would need that transistor to open up exponentially as the voltage at its base increases linearly. Sounds difficult. How do we do that? Well, thankfully, it's extremely easy. Remember how I said that the transistor enters its linear region if there's at least 0 0.7 volts applied to the base? Turns out that if we stay below that amount of pressure, we are now in a strange not really on not really off state, where the transistor behaves completely different. Here, that all is all so convenient. First, it the seems like there's something deeper so there. the resistance between collector and... Alright, yeah, let's get to it. ...works in real life. ...hard to close the seal. But with every bit of an increase in pressure at the base, the spring loses that control to the displacement effect. The more water is passing through from collector to emitter, the weaker the spring gets, basically. And coincidentally, that spring weakness is increasing exponentially if the base pressure increases linearly. Strange stuff. Okay, enough theory. Let's see if all of that even works in real life. So we will replace our drain resistor with this BC548, which is just a standard general purpose NPN transistor. This leg is the collector, this one's the base, and over here is the emitter. We will have see, to connect I'm the collector curious, to like, the junction of capacity. Is there a way to package this up? Uh... Yeah, because we want to be able to have people use this without having to go in and install everything themselves. So in Ableton, there's a thing called Collect All and Save that takes all of the assets of the thing and packages it up nicely. I'm wondering if we it's have a that. Trigger sensor, while the emitter needs to lead directly to ground. Bruh. Well, the emitter needs to lead directly to ground. Okay, the emitter goes to ground. What did he replace? Bro, I'm so bad. Well, the emitter needs to lead directly to ground. Next, we will have to find a way to apply a voltage to the base to open the transistor. While we could just build multiple different voltage dividers for that, there is a way more comfortable solution. Using a potentiometer. These things can be used as variable resistors that you control using this knob. 
but, and that's the handy part, they can also be set up as variable voltage dividers. To see how that works, let's imagine we open one up. Inside, we would find two things. A round track of resistive material with connectors on each side, plus what's called a wiper. This wiper makes contact with the track and also has a connector. It can be moved to any position on the resistive track. Now, the resistance value between the two track connectors is always going to stay exactly the same. And that's why it's used to identify a potentiometer. Cool. So I think what we need to do is, uh, over here, how do I know what is the, are there labeled, uh, what is going on here? It says it has a footprint for it, so I guess we're good. Um, oh wait, no, no, this is the label. I think the one with the arrow is the emitter. That would make sense, right? Uh, I'm just going to move it because I don't really know. The hell? Why is that dot there? Okay, that's cool. And so then what we have is, what, five volts? And then we just use the... So wait, let's move the potentiometer, because I know what that does. Okay, so, so I'm pretty sure that, just do this. And then I think that that goes to like a five volts or something, but I don't know. As a 10K, 20K, 100K, but if you look at the resistance between any of those connectors and the wiper connector, you'll find that that's completely dependent on the wiper's position. The logic is really simple. The closer the wiper is to a track connector, the lower the resistance is going to be between the two. So if the wiper is dead in the middle, you'll have 50% of the total resistance between each track connector and the wiper. From here, you can move it in either direction, and by that, shift the ratio to be whatever you want it to be. By now, you might be able to see how that relates to our voltage divider. You can think of it this way. This point, which we called our output, matches up with the wiper, while the two resistors match up with these two pieces of the resistive track. Remember how we said that the relation between the track to ground. Okay, let's see how this works in practice. I'll use this 100k ohm potentiometer, though the size doesn't really matter for our purposes, since we only care about voltage here, not current. For the input, I'll just use the 12 volts from our power rail. And before we connect the wiper to our transistor, let's first connect it to a multimeter so that we can verify everything's working as expected. As you can see, we are now able wait, wait, what did he do? to produce any voltage to our transistor. Let's first connect it to a multimeter so that we for purposes, since we only care about voltage here, not current. For the input, I'll just use the 12 volts from our power rail. Okay, so how do I do that in KiCad? How do I set up a power rail in Kai KiCad? Right, it's it's special. Oh, don't I have to do that for the op amp and everything, or do those implicitly get 
um, the fuck is going on here? Cool. And before we connect the wiper to our transistor, let's first connect it to a multimeter so that we can verify everything's working as expected. As you can see, we are now able to produce any voltage between 0 and 12 volts. So I'd say we're good to connect this to our transistor now. One caveat though. To prevent creating a short circuit, I'll put a 100k ohm resistor between our potentiometer and the transistor. Let's just use this one. This way, only a small amount of current can flow, while the voltage at the base is unaffected. If we don't do this, we might see some smoke when we completely open the voltage divider and push everything my power supply has through our transistor. And that's not the most pleasant experience. As you can hear, our oscillator is completely dead in the upper voltage range. That's because the transistor is way too open there. But as soon as I get down to about 550 millivolts, nice. it suddenly starts oscillating. That's sweet. The knob is really finicky, but you yeah, can go that from really high pitched down to just periodic clicks. And the range for that is between approximately 350 and 550 millivolts. This is exactly the transistor's not really on, not really off region I talked about earlier. So far, so good. But if the usable voltage range for the transistor is only between 350 and 550 millivolts, aren't we going to run into trouble if we connect our sequencer? Okay, it seems like I just keep losing connection. I'm just going to end it, I think, and I'm going to go home. Okay. <laughs>